Hello friends, I am Welshie and welcome to Theory Pop. We've just had the release of Season 3 of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power and boy was there a lot of lore revealed. Seriously, there was a lot to enjoy about these latest episodes of She-Ra. For this video, I'm going to focus on something we learned about the main antagonist of the series, Hordak. So of course, beware of spoilers for She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. Over the course of the previous two seasons, we have learned that Etheria is not native to Despondos, the dimension the planet is currently located in. Mara transported Etheria from its home dimension to this empty, barren one. As this occurred over a thousand years ago, the awareness of other worlds, and even stars, seems to have passed out of common knowledge for the residents of Etheria. Light Hope, Adora's holographic mentor, reveals how Mara teleported the planet to Despondos. We learn that the First Ones were not the natural residents of Etheria, but were instead intergalactic travellers that had settled on the planet to learn of its natural magic. While Light Hope is one of the few characters initially aware of the existence of other worlds, there is another who retains this knowledge. While working with Entraptor on his portal technology, Hordak reveals that he is not from Etheria originally. He refers to the planet as a backwards world and a backwater, revealing to Entraptor that he came from a place that had more advanced levels of technology than that found on Etheria. Hordak has been attempting to recreate the technology required to open a portal and draw his armies through to Etheria in order to crush the rebellion and completely conquer the planet. Though the previous revelations of Hordak's origins outside of Despondos were momentous enough, Season 3 expanded further on the villain's backstory. It is revealed that Hordak is a clone of Horde Prime, the original leader of the Horde. Horde Prime created an army of clones to conquer the universe, and Hordak was his top general. However, as has been hinted at several times in previous seasons, Hordak is flawed. We have seen how his body has a skeletal, almost frail appearance when he is not wearing his armour, with parts of his pale skin appearing discoloured. In Season 3, he actually faints from exertion after Entraptor intrudes on him when he is without his armour. Hordak reveals to Entraptor that, when Horde Prime discovered this flaw, he sent his clone to die on the front lines, leading Hordak to end up on Etheria. Hordak describes himself as a flawed clone, and his own weaknesses only became apparent some time after his creation by Horde Prime. While the implication seems to be that the cloning was unintentionally flawed, I don't believe this to be the case. I believe Horde Prime always intended for Hordak to be flawed. Horde Prime is the supreme leader of the Horde, and ruler of the known universe, according to Hordak. He is a galactic despot, a tyrant ruling over a multitude of planets through the force of his military might. It would make perfect sense that Horde Prime would need assistance in conquering and subjugating systems. If Hordak's opinion of those below him is anything to go by, then Horde Prime could only entrust such a high position of power and leadership to one person, himself. But there is only one Horde Prime, so the solution would be clear. He would need a clone. However, Horde Prime would need to ensure that the clone he made would never be able to rise up and usurp his own position of power as the overall ruler of the Horde. We know from Hordak's use of his imp as a spy that he is at least somewhat paranoid, arguably with good reason, so we can assume that this is a trait inherited from Horde Prime. Prime would need a good general, someone he knows is competent, but would never be able to challenge his authority. There is one clear way to achieve this, to create a second in command with Horde Prime's intellect, technological prowess and tactical skill, while ensuring his position of authority remains secure. Creating a clone with an inherent flaw, a purposely designed failsafe to prevent any threat to Horde Prime's throne. Horde Prime would use Hordak to expand his empire and command his armies, all the while safe in the knowledge that this clone could never pose any significant threat due to the weaknesses that he had built into Hordak from the start. It's likely that the flaw is hidden and needs some sort of trigger from Horde Prime to manifest. That way, Horde Prime can get full use out of his clones, but if they become a threat or challenge to his power, he simply needs to activate the failsafe to secure his own position. This would also explain why Hordak has been unsuccessful in his own cloning efforts. Hordak explains that, despite his best efforts, he has been unable to create a new body for himself. If the original clone is flawed, then trying to create another cloned body will simply inherit this same flaw, like trying to take a photocopy of a photocopy. This is some impressive foresight from Horde Prime. The Emperor of the entire universe created an entire army by cloning himself, so he'd want to prevent one of his clones from creating their own army in a similar fashion. 
What better way of preventing a clone uprising than by hiding a flaw in the original copy? It would stand to reason that Horde Prime would hide this intentional flaw from his clone. After all, there's no sense in giving Hordak any reason to make a move early before the full extent of his flaw could take effect and begin to weaken the clone. And once the physical symptoms began to manifest, Horde Prime would be given a valid reason, from a villain's perspective, to exile Hordak. What use would the Supreme Galactic Ruler have for a weak, imperfect version of himself? We see that this is how Hordak views himself. He doesn't appear to put blame on Horde Prime for sending him away, instead seeing his own failings and imperfections as validating Horde Prime's actions. I think that this will be revealed to Hordak at some point in a future season. He'll come to realise that the cloning process was always meant to result in a flawed creation, and that Horde Prime had always intended to discard him at some point, regardless of his achievements and service to the Horde. Whether that revelation of his intentionally flawed existence will turn him against Horde Prime, or fuel his desire for conquest, remains to be seen. But this new knowledge of Hordak's backstory has really fleshed out one of the more interesting villains in animation. I can't wait to see what we get in Season 4! But what do you folks think? Is Hordak an intentionally flawed clone? What do you want to see for the Invader of Etheria in future episodes? Let me know in the comments! If you'd like to see more theories, check out this playlist, or subscribe to stay up to date with the latest videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time!